Despite the Allfather's physical absence, Odin's presence was well known and felt throughout God of War 2018. The ravens in the sky, the evidence of cruelty and destruction left by the Allfather, as well as the different tapestries and murals portraying the greatness of the Aesir, all pointed to the all-powerful Odin. In the most recent God of War Ragnarok trailer, we finally got to see Odin as he approaches the doors of Kratos and Atreus' cottage in the wild woods. Although just a silhouette of the character was shown, keeping the character's ominousness maintained until the game's full release, we finally got to hear the Allfather's voice as he reprimanded Kratos for his misdeeds. According to the clip, Odin appears to be as shrewd and devious as Mimir depicted him in the last God of War release. And according to the way the Allfather communicates to Kratos, the Allfather has a way with words. You don't really want war, do you Kratos? All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands, do you even know of God's blood? In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? No! You don't care about anything beyond yourself, beyond the monster who kills without cause. His remarks may appear to be directed at the ghost of Sparta, but they are intended for Atreus, offering him perspective on Kratos' violent nature and how he does not comprehend the obligations and real meaning of being a god. And this is my theory. Atreus seems to have this conflicting view of what being a god is, and we see him throughout God of War 2018 try to understand what being a god really means. I wish I'd known I was a god in Elfheim. I wouldn't have felt so bad about killing so many elves. Well, I'm not sure that's the lesson. You've done nothing to regret. The elves forced their affairs upon us. No, I get it now. We had god things to do, and they were in the way, dragging us into their little problems. Again, are we just leaving that there? I mean... Just knowing we're gods makes me feel so much stronger. Maybe you feel a little too good right now. With power comes a big choice, lad. You can either serve yourself or put your godhood in the service of others, like Tyr did. People really loved him, huh? Aye. The god of war. The one who fought for peace. Had a reputation for being heroic and lawful. Using his power and knowledge to stop wars rather than start them. So there are good gods. Once in a moon, it's been known to happen, yes? That's from a great desert land very far from here. Do gods live there? Oh my, yes. Many, many gods. Good or bad? And not as simple as that, I'm afraid. Atreus tries to categorize being a god as either good or bad, does not see the complication behind being a god. Ultimately, it's Atreus' weakness, his confliction is his weakness, and I'm sure Odin will not hesitate to use it against him. In the Lore and Legends book, Atreus contemplates whether him and his father are good gods or not, despite being sure before that they were. I feel like Odin might shine some light on Kratos' past, allowing Atreus to see how violent and bloodlustful Kratos was, and maybe Kratos really is not, in no way, shape or form, a good god. Odin is well known for his ruthless methods of punishing people who do not bow to his wishes or worse, oppose him. He has been ruthless in his punishments, from confining Mimir to a tree for multiple winters, to imprisoning the Valkyries in their physical form. Zeus from the older God of War games had a similar temperament, where anybody mortal or deity who tried to defy the almighty god of lightning and sky was hit by his wrath. Zeus used to take satisfaction in the fact that he was revered by those under him. Odin, who insults Kratos for not being prayed to, appears to share a sentiment with the Greek god. Do what is necessary. Not because it is written, 